Hello and welcome to My Retro Watches. My name is Mike and here we go with the next episode on the giveaway series. Now the giveaway series of course started out as the 5,000 subscriber giveaway and as of this morning, uh, thanks to Vince's incredible uh, collaboration video, I've now got 8,000 subscribers. So it's now going to be the 8,000 subscriber giveaway and maybe it might even be 10,000 by the time I actually get around to giving it away. Who knows? However, this is really just a touch base video or an update video. Um, I've had a bit of things on last week, so I wasn't able to really film any more on this particular one. I had some projects I had to do. Um, however, uh, in the last video, I was deliberating of what to do with the dial and you guys all came to the rescue and you gave me lists this long in the comment section. And I did my best to try and get back to just about every one of you. Uh, all valid. There's a lot of people for relooming. There's a lot of people against relooming. And as it stands at the moment, I want to just leave it alone. Uh, I want today to reloom the hands, just so that I can show you how I'm going to do that. I've also got a new crown, so I'm going to fit the new crown, show you how I'm going to do that as well. Now the point is, uh, I'm going to get round to doing the case work in the next video, so I'm going to restore the case as best I can, and I'm waiting for a tool to arrive because unbeknown, well not unbeknown to me, I forgot really, for my long-term subscribers, you'll realize I had the disaster in the summer with the big flood that happened in my workshop here, and I lost my rotary tool. Now I do have a polishing machine, which is tucked away behind here, but I wanna do the case work on the uh, rotary tool, like a Dremel, because I feel that any of you guys that are watching and wanna learn, maybe you don't wanna buy the proper tools, so trying to do it with those is a lot easier, and you can see the sort of results you can get. So while I'm waiting for that, I thought we'll just do the reloom of the hands, we we'll do this uh, crown video, and I want to just build the whole watch up uh, at the end, and then we'll make a decision on uh, relooming the hand, uh, relooming the indices on the dial. I'm a bit worried about it because uh, it's quite a task, and I haven't got the version um, uh, loom kit. Basically, it's a bit of money, and I've not wanted to spend the money just yet into investing in that because I use a different type of loom. And I do worry about trying to get it on those indices and get it nice and straight. Because at this stage, when I've put quite a lot of work into this watch, you know, I don't want to make it uh, look bad or worse. You know, I'm going for a nice polished look uh, on the case and things like that. However, I still want that sort of hark back to the fact that this thing was a complete wreck to start with. Um, so it has that sort of cues as, you know, wrecked and restored. So. I'm waffling on, I'll stop talking, because I like talking, as you well know, and I'll hit the bench and we'll start to relube the hands. Right, you are looking at the hands here on the uh, microscope. And as you can see, the loom, certainly on this, this particular one that you can see right here, is the hour hand. And it's gone pretty bad, it's gone pretty um, black, uh, probably through dirt and a bit of mold or something going on there. Uh, the white of the hand is a little bit discoloured. It was quite uh, dusty and dirty. If you remember how the dial was, well, this was a similar thing. Uh, I can perhaps try and improve that a little further with a bit more cleaning. Um, but I just thought I'd show you to start with. Now, normally I wouldn't do this on the microscope, uh, but I just thought for your enjoyment, uh, you can see uh, how I'm going to do it. So we need to remove this old loom. And normally... First of all, you would turn the, the hand over. And as you can see on the back, it's it's considerably worse. You know, loom does degrade significantly over the years. Not only do you lose the luminosity, but you are also losing the, the color, as you can see. And normally what I would do is I would use acetone. So I'd use some nail varnish remover on a cotton bud or a Q-tip, uh, depending on what part of the world you're from. Um, and just wipe it across. And that slowly but surely dissolves all of this off. But I'm a bit worried because of course, on the other side here, we've got paint. And of course, acetone and paint, is gonna strip that off as well. So I'm gonna have to go against the grain a little bit here by trying to scratch it off um, with either my tweezers or I'm gonna start with a bit of pegwood and see if that actually tries to get underneath any of it. Um, it's probably bad practice, you don't really want to scratch the hands, but I do feel as well that if if you do this underneath, uh, you're not going to see it, are you, at the end of the day? It's the front that is all showing. 
So we'll start with this once I just sharpen a piece of uh, pegwood up and see if that actually has any effect to start with on removing this particular type of loom. Okay, I've secured the hand down uh, with a little bit of Rodico. Uh, if you don't know what Rodico is, by the way, it's a bit like blue tack, but less tacky. Uh, it has a million and one uses, just like WD-40. Uh, and in this instance, it's not using trying to remove dirt and fingerprints from things. We are just holding down this particular hand. So I'm going to try and do this as best I can. Now, the trouble is, for your enjoyment, it's in focus. Uh, for my... Um, problem it's not in focus because my eyes are too bad when I come on this microscope but we will try and see so I've got a bit of pegwood and it's not really making much inroads to start with well there we go some of it's coming out now but you I will want to get as much off the size as well as possible and this tip So as you can see, it's coming off quite well now actually, so I'm quite pleased by that. And honestly, when I say all I can see is a blur, that's exactly what I mean. Just trying to focus it a little bit better for you guys as well. The more I move it around, the more the microscope loses, loses focus. So that's coming off pretty well. I'm just having to hold down the end a bit just to try and get these last stubborn bits. So I probably will improve that uh, off camera just to be sure that it's 100% good. Uh, hopefully you get the, uh, the idea how to remove it. And if we just turn it over, oops. We should now not see any. The main thing is not to see any at this point uh, from the front. So just over so quickly, this is how the uh, minute hand looks. And again, it's pretty much the same, isn't it? It's all dark and old. The one good thing about Loom is, uh, in a watch, it is a serviceable item. I think somebody wrote this in the comments, actually, uh, which was a really good point. You know, uh, why let Loom go off with age? I mean, okay, it discolors and it can discolor quite nicely. I know people like the look of uh, faded things. Um, but, you know, it is there to serve a purpose. It's there to light in the night so you can read the time. Um, so with faded Loom, in my opinion, it looks ugly and it's not actually serving any purpose because it's not doing anything so uh, you should really change it when you've got the opportunity although i'm not practicing what i'm preaching am i <laughs> i'm thinking on my feet of course i'm not doing it on the dial but at the end of the day you know you know even on this watch if i don't do the dial you know where the um the hands are going to be because you'll be able to see them so that answers my own question so I'll carry on with this one, I'll get this one done, and then we will um, mix the loom up and I'll show you how I do that.
ready to mix the loom. Uh, but before I do that, uh, I thought I'd better show you what I use. It's a cheaper alternative to the version. It's not really designed for watches, although it is the same type of stuff. So I use this powder here. And I got this on eBay um, for not a lot of money. And if in editing I can still find the seller, then I will link um, in the description below to this very item. Um, now this is glow in the dark, high quality powder, uh, but it works fine for me. Uh, it says it's green. The powder itself is white. It dries white, uh, it glows green. So it's in there, as you can see comes with a little ultraviolet torch although I think the battery's going on mine so we could try to get some of that to glow it's not going to show here is it of course uh, and then you need a binder so you need something to bind the powder into and I use this which is just the Humbrol uh, matte coat and then you need something to mix it in so I've just got an old uh, container here you can see I've done it a lot of times and then I use an old oiler as well to mix but I'm going to show you that uh, but before I do here are the hands now they're all cleaned up and there's a reason that I put it on this lid and I'll tell you that now so first of all I've secured them with a bit of roddy coat uh, to hold them in place obviously they're not touching the uh, plastic here they're just suspended there and this is the back, so it's the back facing up. Whoops, it was until I dropped it, which is a bit of a silly thing to do. And we're gonna loom the back. Um, but once you do that, it, you with this, because it's clear, I can turn it over and I can examine how the loom looks from the other side. Because in my experience with this, sometimes you don't get the mix quite right. And then it oozes through the, the hole and what looks good at the back, at the front looks awful. Uh, but the joy of it is it doesn't dry straight away, so you can just wipe it straight off and uh, start again. Uh, but that's why I do it on one of these. Handy little tip, at least you can see what you're doing. So I'll now cut to a different camera and show you the mixing. Okay, we're now ready to start the mixing and we don't really need much in the way of loom powder for these little hands. Something like that is probably sufficient. Uh, the joy is you can always mix up more. Uh, and then we use the clear coat and I'm just gonna use an old oiler and I'm gonna drip the clear coat next to it. And then mix together. And you want sort of like a runny consistency but with some sort of substance so a bit like um, pancake mix or something like that so as you can see it's still a little bit dry here for me so i'm just going to add some more of the binder I just think I need a just a smidge more of the powder for that mix. And I'll just use the end of a screwdriver there to deposit it. Okay, so then we're going to bring in the hands and the idea is to get some of the mix 
onto your tool or onto your oiler and I'm just going to gently wipe that excuse me I'm just concentrating we're a bit out of focus there aren't we now it looks a bit dark at the moment it will dry uh, lighter and then we'll just now do the same with the hour hand There we are, and again, just checking it hasn't overlapped, which it hasn't, and now I just need to let that uh, dry. Again, I don't think at this stage or in this light, let's see if I switch this light off. Now my torch is uh, not charging it very well at the moment. Okay, so we'll leave those to one side, let them dry, and that's how at least I loom my hands. So I'll now turn the attention to the crown. So here's the stem from the original watch, stem and crown. And hopefully you can see that. Uh, the crown is incredibly bent. Uh, how it's got like that, well, you tell me it's taken a big whack at some point in time and now I was going to try and straighten that um, and I still could but I might damage the uh, the little teeth around the edge here for, for gripping because I'd need to hold this with something in order to put a pin vise on there and try and bend it uh, however I went onto Cousins website and I found a new replacement now this is something I'm going to show you in the next part of this video because I've also bought a replacement crystal and I'm going to show you how I did that on Cousins uh, a UK website uh, sell watch parts um, a lot of you will have been on that site know how to use it but I'll just show you how I managed to find these parts on there might help you along the way uh, so to remove this I need to remove the crown now sometimes these need heat sometimes you can get lucky I've got this which is called a pin vise and it's just got a little chuck in the end here and the more I twist the more it will uh, tighten so I want to put the stem in because uh, I want to grip the stem itself quite tightly and then see if the crown is going to give or not And in this instance, it has. So now the crown is separated. And I'm just looking to see. And yes, I would also say that the... Well, let's just take it out first. If I can get it out. It's decided to get stuck in there. That's nice. that drastic measures so the uh, yeah sorry I'm just looking so the crown is definitely bent but so is the so that makes things just that little bit more interesting because that means now that I have to replace the stem also or else it's not going to look very good at all so I've now got to find 
a replacement stem. All right, I've rummaged through all my parts and I've found a replacement stem, which is good news. However, what's not good news is I won't be able to show it you in this video because I need the case in order to size the stem. And as I haven't done the case work and put the movement in the case, I'm not starting to trim this. Granted, I could use that as a template and I could probably get it pretty accurate. Um, but rather than trying to do it, uh, well, you can't really do it without the case, let's face it, because if I leave it slightly long, it's going to stick out. So what I'm going to do now is plan B. So I'm going to show you um, a screenshot of, of how I found these various parts on the Cousins website. And then uh, hopefully that might help you guys, if any of your Seco projects, uh, navigate that site a bit better. Cousins website, and we need to go to the watch parts. Uh, icon there and click on that and then we want to go on the branded uh, tab and then we need to scroll down to Seiko once we click Seiko at this point in time we want the case parts and then it asks for the hattery number and that is the reference 6309 in this case uh, 8500 and press go on that and there we go, it starts listing all the parts and we can see there that there is the crown and there is the alternative crystal uh, from Stern Cruise. Uh, so those two I already ordered and now I'll just go back and show you how I found the stem as well because it's pretty much in the same place. Go back to watch parts and uh, find Seiko yet again and instead of clicking the case parts we now need the watch parts themselves. Uh, click on there again this time all we need to put in is 6309. Once well, 6309 is in there, uh, click go. It's going to give us a few options, but they're all the same uh, for the stem anyway. And these are the parts that they've got available. And there we go. At the bottom, there is the stem. Uh, all the prices are in UK pounds for me, and these are subject to 20% VAT. And, of course, shipping wherever you are in the world. So there we go. Okay guys, it's now 24 hours on and the hands have had plenty of time to dry and hopefully you can kind of see that there. They're looking pretty good. Uh, so I thought I'd uh, move on and fit the hands, but to fit the hands I needed to tidy up the dial a little bit and uh, fit that um, outer ring or the chapter ring that goes around. And I'll start with that. So I was worried originally in one of the previous videos that this clearly had been glued on. Um, so I thought perhaps that the feet on that ring were snapped. And it turns out when I turned it over and put it on the microscope, they're not snapped at all. They're absolutely perfectly fine. So I examined the holes uh, that are on the dial and cleaned them a little bit and realized that this is just a snap fit. It just needs a good push and it'll click in. And at the moment, so far, it's holding very well. I will monitor that uh, because if it does come out again, um, obviously I don't want to send it out like that so I will end up probably gluing the feet ever so slightly but at the moment I think everything is good to go. I also then had a look at the indices again because it's a kind of 50-50 split with uh, your comments that uh, for, are going against loom or not to loom and I've pretty much come to the conclusive decision that I am not going to loom and the reason for that is the more I look at them I've not they're not just a straight line, but they've actually got a radius all the way around. So they're, they're rounded all the way along. And um, I don't know whether that is because the actual indice is as well and the loom is just put on top. It's quite hard to tell. But I feel that I might make more mess trying to do it. And I feel that I've already made one mistake on this dial and I really don't want to make another one. So the decision now is to leave it as is. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to show you how to fit the hands. So all we need to do, um, first of all, well, actually, you'll notice that there is a stem and a crown fitted. Now, these aren't the original uh, or the new replacements. I've just borrowed this from another watch because I need a stem and a crown in order to be able to set the hands correctly. So uh, what I want to do is wipe, pull the crown out and wind this on. Uh, until we see the um, date 
as we can see here about to change I like to just make it click right over and then I'm set to fit the hour hand so I'll just get the hour hand ready always a bit of a strange angle for me and I need to line that up obviously with the uh, 12 o'clock position and then once I'm happy I'm going to bring in the hand pushing tool and I'm going to Uh, put a little bit of force to press it on but not too much force that it would bend and then i'm just going to look at different angles to see if it's sticking up because if it's sticking up at the front which this one is ever so slightly you can go on and you just press it towards the front as well and it's going to manipulate it into position and then i like to look from the back here to make sure that it's sitting parallel and then another test is to then of course wind it and make sure that it's not catching on uh, anything and once we're happy with that I'm going to return it to the 12 o'clock position and then we do the same with the minute hand I just need to do the same now with the minute hand And we're going to have a look at that again from all the angles and make sure that we're completely happy with it. Which I am. And then the last bit is the second hand. So I'm just going to bring in the second hand and try and line it up. Uh, certainly not like that. Okay, there we go, and we'll see if it uh, clears the uh, minute hand, because sometimes they have a tendency to foul if you've uh, got it on wrong, uh, but on this occasion, we are perfectly fine. Um, so now what you have to do is just to check to make sure, or to see, sorry, how the day date changes, and how close to 12 o'clock does it change. I guess there's no right and wrong on this. It just depends on luck and a bit of accuracy. So we'll just wind this through now, uh, the 24 hours. And then we'll see where we've got to. Well, here we go. So that's five minutes to 12. So I'm gonna be saying that's Okay, trying to adjust that by five minutes is quite a task because you're talking about probably microns uh, adjustment onto the uh, hour hand. So uh, before I uh, finish this video, I'm going to attempt to see if we can do a loom shot um, with the lights out. Uh, I don't know whether it's going to work, to be honest with you, because I don't think the camera is going to be able to pick it up very well, but I'm going to have a go. So I'm going to see how good or bad the loom is. So I'm just going to move this to the classic uh, 10 to 2 and I'll go and hit the lights okay so I'm not quite in darkness at the moment because uh, the camera or the app that I use that Filmic Pro hates the dark I've just found out um, I can try and charge this here and you can actually see the old loom look uh, still wants to to work which is a bit of a bonus um, now what I can see on my real eyes against what's on the camera is a night and day difference. So it does loom pretty good. Now if I hit this light, you can clearly see the hands. Um, 
And again, I'll just charge them again with the ultraviolet. And you can see the indices, which is pretty cool. Um, and with my eyes, this is a lot brighter than the camera is trying to render. So I think this is a bit of a win, guys, to be honest with you. You can clearly see that that loom is going to work. Right then guys, that is the end of the video. I do hope you enjoyed this particular one. Uh, we've got a few more jobs done to uh, try and get this thing complete now. And of course it's now looking like a proper watch. It's fantastic uh, to see it tick again. Uh, it's astonishing really when you consider just how bad it was right at the very start of this uh, episode, not this episode, of this whole series should I say. Um, so please uh, give me a like if you enjoyed this video. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing because that way uh, you might get a chance of winning this particular watch. And of course, how about joining the Facebook groups? So I've got my own Facebook group, which is uh, Retro and Vintage Watches and Restorations. There's a great Facebook group for Seiko called Seiko Passion. And of course, there's Mark Lovick's um, Watch Repair Lessons group, uh, which is also a great place. Plenty of places to get watch um, information, get your questions answered or just feed your watch addiction. Um, so hopefully I can see you in the groups because I'm active in all of them as much as I possibly can be. Um, so, you know, thanks very much for watching. The casework video will be coming up very soon. Bye for now.